gentlemen, was it a finale befitting of this series? I mean, for me, I felt like it was basically what you would expect from from the series. It was it was engaging. It was it was interesting, but it was super low key. Like I actually can feel why they were so quick to green light season two because you know you ended on this and and there's it doesn't make it just doesn't feel yeah. like yeah. there was enough. I really did yeah. feel like okay, we need we need the second yeah. part. I'm not even like excited because they're going to do new things. It's just like complete this story. I just yeah, I just need yeah. you to complete this story out. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, lots of loose. Ends. There's lots of loose ends. Right. Um. That that said, season two. <laughs> yeah. If, uh, if and, that and, finished. And on top of that, it just it really felt super low super key. Low. Like it was it was interesting, but it was just so low key, so low key. for me. Uh, outside yeah. of certain spaces, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I think the one thing that I felt was missing from this finale, which of course, as you just said it very well, it is it is the high standard that we've expected from this series the whole time. Um, and I uh, love the speech. I love the speech that was given, even though she was dead. Best dead speech ever. It was a great um, dead speech. Great holographic speech. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it's it's fascinating to go back and listen to what she says. Some real insights on the ideas of... Um, rebellion against right. and, uh, tyranny um and i thought very much as i have been on and off during the whole series of burma i thought a lot about burma about you know the oppression they're feeling just not far from here and, and what they're dealing with and no one's coming to their rescue like everyone's coming to ukraine and stuff mm -hmm. like that and, and you know, there's a couple of other places around the world where there's just tyrants just hammering down and and she said something i thought was just really wise and, and again not not becoming of a Star Wars, <laughs> yeah. you know, social commentary. That's not really what you what you think when you think about Star Wars. And they're talking about just how how hard how hard a, a tyrant has to work to oppress people because it's so much against our nature. We want freedom, yeah. and the oppressor wants the opposite to what is our natural state of order, which is that they want to take away our freedom, and so therefore it's a really hard work for them. Um, and I thought that was great, but, um, and I also, so the other thing I really liked was the fact that he actually went to get the good bricks. He actually, when he got there, I kind of felt he had the choice to go to the funeral, maybe kick up a sting or do whatever, but he went to save his girlfriend, girlfriend. Right. Um, and I thought that was kind of his way of saying, I'm actually going to push towards the future. Um, I'm, I'm going to mourn, but I'm, I'm there's someone in trouble. I need to help them. I was really happy about that, too, because, again, it goes back to the idea of following tropes, which I think the show has done a really good job in not falling into following uh, regular uh, series and especially spy series tropes. Because the obvious thing would have been, let me go. I need to go commemorate my mother. Let me try and sneak into the funeral and watch. And yeah. while everybody's waiting for him to come over there and sneak attack him and he went the opposite direction, went to go find his girl. And while there might have been one or two people who considered it, it wasn't the whole, you know, army yeah, waiting yeah. for him like it was for the funeral. Yeah. And I was just like, I'm glad there's common sense in this. Yeah. Like, And like, I think you said it great. It was the first time that we see him really starting to step into looking towards the future and a better tomorrow rather than looking at the past, yeah. a.k.a. his sister, looking yeah. at the present, yes. a.k.a. his mother. You know, yes. and 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 actually being like, let's let's see if we can move forward, and I, I will yeah. respect what is being brought to me, and yeah. as opposed to trying to consistently fight against the wave. It, he was caring about someone else. Yeah. Um. No one else bothered to try to get her out except for him, and you know he left the funeral and it was self selfless in that. But to about tropes. There's one thing I really felt was missing, and I, and I couldn't put my finger on it for a little while. And that is, there's a, there was one thing I think we really needed to see that I thought the series built up for but didn't deliver, is there had to be a face-off, even if it wasn't a showdown. A showdown would have been okay as well, between Cassian and either the and girl or the guy with the stick up his ass. I, I boy. agree. This is part of yeah. where I said is the low-keyness of, of this show, where it was like, 
it there's just conclusions that just did not have fully on. Yeah, they I, I needed to, to at see, least see each other. Yeah, I wanted to see like guy stick with a stick up his ass, you know, do something with Andor, like you know. Yeah, get I wanted to get yeah. like almost come up ins or something like that. You, you, you yeah, finally get to see the the person who has eluded you, your white whale. You wanted your king, yeah. a, your your uh, Captain Ahab yeah. moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just just a bre- even if like just a, but yeah, they acknowledge and see each other because Cassie doesn't even know this guy exists. Right. Um. But but we get that weird scene with with the ISB lady and him. Oh gosh, that made me uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, that was super awkward. Like, I mean, it's. I think that might be the worst display of will they, won't they that I've seen in a show where it's like, I was no, going no, don't, I don't. don't want you to. Like, don't don't make this a thing. <laughs> this yeah. is not a thing. <laughs> I, yeah. I do because oh. it's weird. It'd be weird. Oh, but it's not so weird. Cute. Cool. It's it. This weird obsessive. It's just like. It's like um, Dr. Evil and that old chick in um, Austin Powers. You know how Dr. Yeah, Evil yeah. got with... It's kind of like that, but that was funny, right? That right. was cool and funny. This Big. is not funny. It's like, ooh, cooties. Yeah. They're getting your cooties. Yeah, that's why I want to see it, because it's ill and it's weird. But they, the don't other- have, it, they don't have any chemistry. Like, I still don't actually understand what it is. I feel like it's like he saw her from across the way, and then she was so gorgeous, and then she threw him away and, and then continued to, and, and there was nothing that added into it. Like, he's, he's literally done nothing that uh. is, like, a series of things to make this make sense. It's literally been, what, two interactions? Three at well, now it's three. Now it's three. Yeah. <laughs> I just think they're soulmates in obsessive compulsive behavior. Um, exactly. But having said exactly. that, it's having said that, trauma bonding. <laughs> <laughs> if this keeps going, if this this will be our first, you know, you say you want to see the empire. This will be first empire relationship, love that's with true. between. That, that's true. a new thing, and that's what Mister Gilroy is bringing us new things. But. Um, yeah, that was bizarre. If and the other thing, if, if it wasn't, if it wasn't, uh, you know, a face-off between uh, Cassie and then one of those two, then at least it could have been. I would have loved to have seen kind of acknowledgement that one of them realised that the access was in the in the room, like yeah, because you know, if, if one of them had got so close to the access and maybe not seen him and he got away, because obviously they don't want him, they don't want them to know who who he is, right? Just. I would have loved it. Just they just had to be, be crossing paths because yes, they brought them all together. Yeah, and you know they would have their reasons. I mean, you'd have presumed that in the writers' room they would have thrashed out every possibility. But I, I, I would have, I, you know, I like this episode, but I just felt a little bit unfulfilled by not yeah. seeing what I thought we were going to see, which I thought was we were building up to. So. And that this is what I, I feel like this is they made this show. I know uh, I was re- watching a thing. They were talking about how Tony Gilroy initially had uh, they had initially planned this out to be five seasons for each year leading into what would eventually be Rogue oh, One. Wow. Right. But they ended up reducing it down to two seasons. So next season is going to be basically uh, four years broken down into the, the series. So they're going to oh. time jump a lot in the, that one. But I can see, I can tell by the way that it's written, and I am not an advocate of expected sequels uh, uh, existing, um, which in in the sense of like, you don't ever have to feel like you have to conclude your first season because you know you're going to get another one. No, it it should have string conclusions to it, like you said, where there's, there's certain things that, if you continue to the next season, it, it, it adds to the story, but it doesn't feel like you have to wait right. for that to be yeah. to be satisfied. Let's remind our friends to please click on the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you know when we have new videos out. Right. Subscribe! Subscribe! Oh, die.